I'm 37, and I want a baby. So I'm pursuing all my options. I met with an adoption attorney who was very encouraging, and I recently began the artificial insemination process. So with a little bit of luck, I could be pregnant right now. I said too much for a first date, didn't I? Look, if you're looking for shards of originality or you're looking for a hard comic edge, forget this film. Go see Forgetting Sarah Marshall. But if you're like just a regular, lesser discriminant viewer, wanting to kick back with a few cheap laughs, then Baby Mama is just the ticket. This is a movie that goes exactly where we think it's gonna go and offers absolutely no surprises pulled out of its bag of rather controlled tricks. There's something wrong with your toilet. The movie stars Saturday Night Live veteran and 30 Rock star Tina Fey as Your Kate. She's a 37-year-old successful professional woman who wants to have a baby. But with no husbandly prospects on the horizon and a rather uncooperative uterus, she first seeks counseling from an adoption agency that turns her down. She eventually winds up talking to Sigourney Weaver, who's the mysteriously fertile head of a surrogate agency. Another Saturday Night Live star, Amy Poehler, plays Angie. She's sort of a trailer trash young woman who decides to be the surrogate to take Kate's baby to full term. This, of course, is over the reservations of her rather, rather strange boyfriend, played by Dak Shepard. Very quickly, the slovenly Angie becomes Oscar Madison to Kate's rather persnickety Felix Unger. They form a rocky relationship that really carries this motion picture through some rather thin, patchy parts. Then Kate bumps into Bob, who's played with a lot of affability and a lot of depth by Greg Kinnear. He runs a local juice bar which serves up not only delicious healthy drinks, but a romantic opportunity for the rather anxious Kate. Baby Mama works like a lighter, frothier version of a Judd Apatow movie, uh, mainly like, you know, knocked up. It uh, comes with a lot of vulgarity, a lot of sweetness in, in quiet measures, plus no matter how venal, no matter how stupid the characters start out, by the end of the close credits, they're happy, contented work. individuals. Of course he did, because working is awesome and being married sucks. That's his car. What, this right here? Yes, Silver Infinity, Penn State sticker, baseball mitt in the back seat. This is Scott. You know what we should do? Yeah! I was gonna say, leave a funny note! Tina Fey, of course, is the star of the film. She has charisma to spare. But being the star of an entire feature-length movie, well, reveals the limitations of her acting ability. She seems to be very stiff and actually kind of awkward and mannered in some spots. She's not really at ease in front of the camera the way her co-star Polar is, who just throws herself with complete utter abandon into her character. Baby Mama boasts just enough jokes to carry its feature-length weight. But I got to tell you, I got to warn you, that this is a classic case where the best jokes have been purloined and ruined by the theatrical trailers and the television commercials for this film. So I guess what I'm saying is, if you've seen the commercials and you've seen the theatrical trailers for Baby Mama, it's conceivable you've seen the funniest parts. For the Daily Herald on the web, dailyherald.com, I'm Dan Geyer. You have a kid with a wiffle ball bat and a dad with a crotch. You know, it's not going to be funny if you ruin